Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We're in Matthew chapter 7, verse 29, James chapter 3, verse 6, and Isaiah chapter 4, verse 6. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for the opportunity to share in the treasure of your word, Lord. God, help us to appreciate it. Help our ground to be cultivated. Help our mind to be appreciative of this word. We love you. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Matthew chapter 7, verse 29. For he was teaching them as one who had authority, not as their scribes. Wow. Okay. So this is um, Christ and he is speaking to the people in parables. He's giving them examples. He's talking about the house that's built on sand. He's talking about whether or not you receive the word that he gives into your heart or whether or not you just allow them to um, pass away. Um, Christ is the authority. And they're realizing it here, right? And they're 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 realizing that he's not like other men. And so when people back then would be teaching, they had a certain way about them. They would say what the word was saying, but not necessarily expounding on the word or ne not necessarily giving like godly spirit filled examples, right? And so um, back then, there was just a formality, especially as it related to the scribes. And you know that they depended on the scribes a lot because um, they always quoted the scribes. They weren't usually quoting the word, right? They would say the scribes said that Isaiah, I mean, that um, Elijah had to come first, right? They wouldn't say Elijah has to come first according to, you know, the words, right? So the word. So, um, but when Christ was teaching them, he was teaching them farther beyond a scribe as 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 a rabbi as a expert in the word right and not only that his examples um would speak of the father right and him being one right and and he even would speak with such authority that he would say um if you listen to my words then such and such if you receive my words if you listen to them and so he wasn't speaking in the in the second person or or the third or the fourth person whatever you call it he was speaking in the first person right he was saying i me if you listen to me if you heed my words right and so because he spoke with authority they knew that this was not um, a common man, right? Many of them probably by the way he speak, possibly even received him as the Messiah because he was not like other men. He he did not um, speak under any sort of fear, under any sort of um, thinking that other people were authorities over him. No, he knew the word and he knew his father right? He knew who he was when he spoke. And so when Christ speaks, we need to be um, like the people in a sense, knowing that he is the final authority, right? He is the final authority over this word. He has authority. And not only that, he has the power to grant authority to us. And so when he died, he did that, right? He wanted us to do these works and greater. He He was commissioning us and sending us out to do um, his will and his work, the work and the will of the father, because that's what he did. And so um, as he did these things, you know, for the father and, and, and worked in authority and gave us authority. He wants to, us to heed the words that he gives. So when we're reading that word and when we're reading that Bible, it's not for us to pick and choose, right? It's as the Holy Spirit is showing you something, you need to listen and you need to heed it. You need to open those eye gates up and those ear gates up and pour richly 
from this grace of the word of God. And so, and, and when you do that and you're filled up with that thing, it's easier to operate in the authority, right? Because the more you pour into this very sealed garden that you have, you have a sealed garden. There are walls all around your garden and, and nobody's getting in, right? And so it is a place where you are pouring in from the word of God. Remember, we are filtering out um, things of this world. We're not letting everything from this world get in our garden. We are operating in in letting um, Christ's word come in. We're operating in letting Holy Spirit pour into us and purging us of the things of this world. All right. And so the more we do that, the more we know that we feel our hearts. Right. And so um, as we feel our hearts, our hearts overflow and our mouth speaks. We know that as our mouth speaks, then our, our ship is steered by how our mouth speaks. Our tongue is called a rudder in the word of God. It, it turns the boat, even though it's such a small part, it turns the boat to where it's going to go. And all of that is based on what you let in the garden. Right. All right. And so it says, James chapter three, verse six, the second verse that the Lord gave me, it says, and the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life and set on fire by hell. All right. And so um, we need to realize that, you know, our tongue can really mess some stuff up, right? It, we need to realize that, especially if we are operating in the authority of, of Christ, um, we need to be careful what we say. And God is letting us know here that, you know, it is so important what you are saying, don't just say anything. And, and, and if you have to, don't say anything at all, right? Because it's better to not say anything than to say a bunch of stuff and set stuff on fire. I told you guys, I think I told you guys this the other day, I was um speaking to someone and it wasn't that I was saying anything wrong or bad by my own standard. I thought I was talking really nice. But the Lord showed me later that because I witnessed to this woman later um, that it was almost like I was throwing matches in a forest, you know, and matches can catch, right? They get on something dry and they can catch. So um, because it, and normally I, I don't think that these things would have mattered so much, but because I'm working in the authority authority of Christ and I'm I'm speaking um of of things that are are of God right people are going to be more critical of my words so I need to not speak if I can't speak everything that is being built up and being positive and being of Christ right I don't need to mix in a little this comment and that comment and um then go and witness right you can't be double minded in that way so it um the example um that I said I, I was talking about just kids and I said something and I'm only giving you this as an example because it was such a light comment I want you to understand what I'm talking about um that I was speaking that the children um that we should allow them sometimes to put on a little nail polish or something like that, especially in the days that we live in. You know, I was speaking about, you know, being drawn to gender issues, you know, um, in this world. And I was saying it without saying it, right? And I didn't know how this woman felt about it. And so, you know, the thing is, if I know Holy Spirit didn't inspire that, I don't care who I was talking to about it before and it was okay. I don't know, you know, I, I wasn't following the spirit if I wasn't following the spirit. 
I need to follow the spirit in my conversation, not my flesh, not the little comments and wiseness and, and issues like that. We need to be sensitive. And the Holy Spirit showed me later that was taking like taking a match and throwing it in the forest and just hoping that it doesn't catch. Right. You don't know. And, and the Lord was even showing me that night. Why is this so? Well, you don't know if her cousin or her brother or someone like that is having gender identity issues and all sorts of things like that. You don't know. So throwing just saying a little comment like that just to be funny or smart or light, you know, and then you're going to go and minister the word to someone. Um, Yeah, you you felt that small unction that was a no right? So don't do that. Don't go there. Don't speak about such things, right? We have to operate in the authority of Christ, right? We have to operate fully. And that's not just speaking things of faith. That is speaking, right? In general, that means that all of our words need to come under chastening, right? We don't need to just lightly comment, And give our opinion, you know, when Christ is saying, "Mm -mm, I don't want your opinion right now. I need you to work. You're at work. You think you're having fun and you're mingling right now. But I'm telling you, you're at work, right? You're at work when you're at the grocery store. You're at work when you are in the field, right? So it doesn't matter. We need to operate in the authority of Christ Jesus. And, And when we're doing that, we need to be sensitive to the to our tongue. We don't want our tongue to be set on fire by hell because it could not subject itself to the Holy Spirit because it would not subject itself to to being disciplined. No, we need to be sensitive. When Holy Spirit says, okay, this is your evaluation for the day, you need to take notes, right? You need to sit down and say, I'm not trying to fail that one again. I'm not trying to go in this negative route again. I want to operate in the fullness and the authority of Christ. All right. And so the third scripture is Isaiah chapter four, verse six. There will be a booth for shade by day from the heat and for a refuge and shelter from the storm and rain. And so the thing I was realizing about this is we know that this is in the thousand year reign and so these are the people who have survived um the tribulation right and so um the thing is you are going to you don't want to let me say it like that you don't want to have all this power have all this authority have been have been operating for God, have been doing the will of the Father, and you end up impeding your inheritance, right? Don't impede your inheritance. Don't don't cause things to burn up at the Bema Sea, right? Don't be one of the ones who's left behind because you refuse to alter the words of your tongue. You refuse to heed the word that in the authority of Christ and walk in the authority that was given to you, right? The Lord is saying, chase in our tongues. The Lord is saying, don't be quick to comment and debate with people. Don't be quick to say your opinion about every single thing, right? The tongue is a fire, it says a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life and set on fire by hell, right? So be careful how you speak to your kids. Be careful how you talk to anybody. All words should be chastened. I'm convicted for this one, you know, and I'm I'm trying to chasten my words, but, you know, sometimes you slip, sometimes you get non-vigilant right? Especially when you start hanging around people and it's like, oh, we're just joking. We're talking. And then it's like, you know what? Mm -mm. No, no, I shouldn't have done that. I should not have gone there. And so, um, Isaiah 4, 6 is speaking about those people who are in tribulation. I'm not trying to be in tribulation, right? Because I refuse to chase in my tongue. And these people are people who overcame in tribulation, right? So there are people who actually were not killed in Armageddon. And, and remember at Armageddon, all of God's enemies are going to be wiped away. So these are people who are not enemies of God. These are people who are having to find a refuge um, in 
in God, but that are not, um, how should I put this? That are not, they don't have the same inheritance as the people who are the brides, right? Those who were taken. And so they're going to need shelter. It says there will be a booth for shade by day from the heat, right? So if, if there's any heat to be had, you know, from the sun, the light of Christ, he is going to be a shade for them. He's going to, he's going to provide that for them. And it says, and for refuge and shelter from the storm and rain. So if there is any elements outside, he's going to provide that. Is it, is it bad that God is providing that? No, it's excellent that they, ha- that even they have um, Christ to lean on, right? In this time, they can find refuge in him. But we want to find refuge in the temple, right? We want to go in and not come out. We want to have that inheritance. We want to have those many mansions. We want to have um, all that God is providing for us, all of the things that we have earned through the working with for our father right and so the thing that I, I was I felt like Holy Spirit was showing me was that you know you can have eternal life and not have a lot of inheritance right do you really want that right do you really want stuff to be burning up at the beam of sea because you refuse to control that tongue we want to operate in the authority of Christ and we want to operate in ways that are pleasing to the Lord. And one of the things that he wanted us to do was to allow Holy Spirit to chasten our tongue. And one of the ways that we do that sometimes is to just be quiet, right? And and if you cannot hear and talk at the same time, then stop talking, all right? All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for being our refuge here, Lord God, being a place that we can run to, being a place that we can go and learn and be disciplined, Lord God. Help us to use the authority that you have given to us to speak the words that you want us to speak and help us not to speak when we don't need to be speaking, God. Show us the way, God. Let our stuff and our rewards and all the things that you have blessed us with not burn up at the beam of seat. Help us to have great riches and great honor, Lord God, and not condemnation. We love you. We want to follow your spirit, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you would like to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, Go ahead and pray this prayer with me, but more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross, and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you prayed that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth, meaning he is going to show you the way and he's going to bless your path. One of the best ways to learn the voice of the Holy Spirit is to sit down, read your word, chew on your word and talk to him. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So begin to seek his face today while he may be found. Also, one of the things that Christ wanted us to do and not forsake was the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Go out, find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God. Go out and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And also go out and tell people about what the Lord has done for you in your life. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Take care and be blessed.